And there's Will. Hey, hey, it's me. Hey. Right What's before up? the show, I deleted his microphone off of the. <laughs> I made I made a big mess. It's like I didn't even exist. Hello. But I'm here. And hey. it, is, it goes right to you. Look at hey, that. Hey, look at that. How you guys? The camera doing? loves me. How you guys? Baby. Doing? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, everybody. How's Special welcome to Throw House. Twenty eight months. Oh, we got cookies. Oh yeah, boy, oh, yeah. howdy! I forgot about Saw these those. babies. We got the Pokemon cookies. Oh boy, I'm excited. So, do we talked about these a few weeks ago? Yes. Uh, how these are just Costco cookies? Yes. Big update. Uh, apparently, those cookies were in Costco for a month and then they were pulled. Really? So she basically just swooped up the recipe and added vitamin D. <laughs> and she came, she was like, "Yeah, we just worked with that supplier and they revived that recipe." So okay, that's that. <laughs> All right. She, owned, she basically owned up to it. Got no problem with that as long as they're good. Yes. Uh, already hard to open. So not off to a good start. Not off to a good start. Cookies yeah. need to be. Immediately accessible. Yeah. Ooh. Not as good as the picture. Hmm. No, that looks like you. They're harder than I thought. Oh, okay. Oh, they're okay. Okay, you guess what? Now, what are these exactly? Midnight mini cookies, deep chocolate, velvety white chips. I mean, I'll eat the whole bag. And sea salt. I'll gladly eat the whole bag in one go. They're okay. I'm not going out of my way just for these cookies. No, these are... I guess they have vitamin D and I need that desperately. They're also gluten-free. Which... Is that good or bad? Well, no, it's good for people who are gluten intolerant. But for somebody like me, who is not gluten intolerant, tastes like crap. Do they taste... I don't think they taste... I I can taste the difference. And I am not a fan of the taste of these cookies. I'll have one more to confirm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Yeah, no, not not good. I used to be, I used to have a problem with vegan stuff. Yeah. And then I moved to Brooklyn and became a soy boy. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing, though. A lot of, you can make vegan stuff taste really good. Yeah. Most of the time, it does not. Right. Most of the time, it's trying too hard and misses the mark completely. Yeah. But sometimes, you can't tell the difference at all. Yeah. It all, it all depends on your seasonings and your the oils you use and the spices you use. Mm-hmm. You can make anything taste like anything. Yeah, like there's a, a donut, a famous donut place in Brooklyn that mm-hmm. is all vegan, and I didn't even know. Yeah, it was awesome. It tasted really good. Yeah, uh, gluten free. I don't. I don't really. I can. I can it, t- it, it tastes like me. dry and stuff. It so. does taste dry. There's like no, I don't like. Uh, I like. I like soft. I like yeah. soft cookies. Yeah. Oh, look, we're not, I'm not trying to be intolerant here. If you are legitimately gluten-free and you need to eat this stuff, then by all means eat this stuff. Because that, for me, it tastes like chalk. I mean, I'm, I got four bags. <laughs> so I'll, Find some gluten intolerant I'll, friends. I'll have to report back after I eat all yeah. four bags, which I bet will not take a week. No. I bet it'll be quick. Because at the end of the day, there's still cookies. There's still cookies. I got to eat them. Yeah. Cookies are like pizza. Even when they're bad, they're still good. <laughs> yes. Uh... Gamer Dad Coqui, thank you for gifting us up. I, I was on a vegan pizza kick for a little bit because I thought Ooh. cheese was bad for my skin. Yeah. Turns out I wasn't the problem. <laughs> but the vegan pizza was fine. You have to get it from a good vegan pizza place. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, we got a lot of talk about today. Gotta be honest, past week, nothing happened. Yeah, everyone's been on vacation. Yeah, everyone was mostly posting. All the news sites were posting about Black Friday deals. Not really any news happening. Yeah, couldn't be us doing that. Um, Also, too, it's like the end of the year, so it's like not really much to report on. Well, it's tech season, baby. All this cool shit's coming out. Yeah, Uh, and already November came and went, and all the cool shit already came out. Yeah, Uh, still don't have a PS Five Slim. Should I get one? No. Why would you need one? I don't, but yeah. I got to make a video, but I guess I don't have to make a video. I mean, I, I feel like, I think, it's, it's I feel like nobody now cares. to make a video. I, if anything, a short, but is $500 worth making a YouTube short? Unless you can make triple that back, <laughs> you know? No. Yeah. Definitely not. Yeah, no, I don't think it's worth it. I don't think I I've think, ever made $500 on a TikTok I don't, or a the short. The thing is, like, the PS5 Slim, everything I've seen about it so far, even the positive reviews said, if you already own a PS5, do not get this. You yeah, have no- the old shitty PS5. How shitty is it? I know you got problems with it. I that. got problems. You know what, though? I'm going to get the new one, and I'm still going to have problems. Yeah. Also, probably. I need it to be black. 
Yeah. I, I gotta wait for the dark plates to yeah. come out or whatever. Anyway, uh, nothing's happening. But yeah. there's still news. There's still some news. Still we'll find some little we'll things. find ways to make it clickbait. Relevant. Like yes. Switch Two DLSS. Wow. Oh. We've been talking about Switch Two for many many years. Yes. Uh, everybody's been saying it's gonna have DLSS, mm -hmm. uh, which is like just a way to digitally upscale yeah. the 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 image. Uh, I've been saying I don't think it's gonna. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've been saying it's not gonna be as great as everybody's saying, and yeah. I, and I think that Nintendo. I don't think Nintendo would go for DLSS to be honest. Uh, but now we have a little more information about how it might not be the DLSS specifically in the Switch Two might not be as powerful as hoped. Mm -hmm. So let's dig into that. Uh, the successor to the Nintendo Switch may not include deep learning accelerator tech for its upscaling. It's claimed that's what it's stands for deep learning it should be sub sampling right yes or maybe that's a different kind of super sampling yeah deep learning super sampling so who's, who's deep learning accelerator tech yeah. oh it's probably just a, yeah you're right yeah. it's probably just a different word for it uh numerous reports have suggested that the nintendo's next console will use nvidia's dlss upscaling technology uh add <laughs> the feature is exclusive to NVIDIA's graphics cards on PC. It works by using AI to upscale the resolution of games, effectively allowing developers to achieve higher graphical settings and better frame rates on weaker hardware. However, some of NVIDIA's DLSS solutions also use tech um, called Deep Learning Accelerator, DLA, which uses a standalone engine designed to speed up AI calculations. Because deep learning calculations can be computationally expensive, meaning they can use up a lot of processing power, DLA is designed to take most to take on most of the heavy lifting to free up that power so it can be used elsewhere. In the latest episode of Digital Foundry's DF Direct show, founder Richard Ledbetter stated that according to his sources, the Switch's successor will feature DLSS but won't have DLA accompanying it. There was a question mark over the cost of DLSS and whether Nintendo was going to include Deep Learning Accelerator, similar to the one that was in the T the T two three four GPU, which would effectively which would effectively make DLSS free or at least a lot less computationally expensive. Ledbetter said, uh, referring to the T two three nine GPU, which is rumored to be the in the next console, he added. I've had sources come forward saying there's no DLA in the T239, which would limit the viability of DLSS uh, quite significantly. Ledbetter estimated that if the Switch's successor has DLSS without DLA, it would be unlikely that the console would be able to upscale to 4K, and that more realistically, it would be like a 1080p upscaling, possibly 1440p, if you're lucky, depending on the game. It's understood that Nintendo showed off tech demos for the uh, Switch successor behind closed doors at Gamescom, including a version of Epic's impressive Matrix Awakens uh, Unreal 5 tech demo. Uh, I, so early on, one of one of the things that I was saying was, at most, this next console is going to be 1440p. Right. I don't see a 4K situation happening. Right, right. Uh, if it's 4K, great. Yeah. Uh, but... Upscaling from 1080p to 1440 makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo's always going to be a little bit behind. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's possible that it has DLSS in there and just doesn't do anything with it. But then why put it in there? Because it goes along with uh, part of the chipset. Like, for example, the PlayStation Portal. Uh -huh. The Wi-Fi chip has Bluetooth. And it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. have Bluetooth. Got it. It's just it just kind of comes with the package. Okay. Uh, whether or not they decide to unlock it, and and Nintendo did that with the Switch as well. Yes. The, yeah. the uh, it had Bluetooth, but they disabled it. Yeah. Um, and then eventually they enabled it. Mm -hmm. Maybe this will be something for developers to be able to have access to, but they won't necessarily be pushing it with their specs. They're not right. going to tell everybody, oh, it's 1440p thanks to DLSS. They'll probably say it's 1080p or I would think that it'll be at least 1440p. Got it. You know, like yeah. like I I think the next console, if you plug it into a TV, I think that it's going to, you know, it's got to be more than 1080p. Yeah. It would be ludicrous to limit it to just 1080p right now. Well, I mean, it would be possible if it's 1080p 
locked for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it has to be at least powerful enough to do that because the Switch currently cannot. Um, and then, you know, hopefully frame rate is stable enough to be like 60 for everything. Well, there, I mean, on paper, the Switch is 1080p. Right. I on, know nothing hits it. Yeah. But they need to be able to say this new one can do this. Right. You know, being just saying this new one can do 1080p all the time. It's yeah. like you're saying what? That last one couldn't? <laughs> All of a sudden, the normies are going to Well, that be was like, like, you know, the PS3 and the 360, they were touted as HD consoles. Mm -hmm. When at most, they were really, you know, 720p consoles. And yeah. then the Xbox One and the PS4 came out, and those were 1080p, except the Xbox One was mostly a 900p console <laughs> at launch. Yeah, it was the difference between 720p and 1080p. Yeah. Uh, but for some reason, tech companies decided 720p was HD, and so was 1080p. I don't. Uh, th that it's 720p is HD, 1080p is full HD. That's okay. And now, uh, 4K or 2160p is ultra HD, yeah. and 1440 is QHD. Yeah. So we're, we're I'd I'd imagine a QHD situation yeah. happening here. Um. But anyway, it's possible that uh. The DLSS is being is going to be used as just a way for developers to get that extra little bump. Yes. Maybe if you want to port some games over from the old Switch to the new Switch, mm -hmm. you can use DLSS to get that little bump. Or yeah. maybe if, if you want your game to utilize a lot of graphics and because of that, you'll only be able to get 1080p resolutions, DLSS yeah. will pick up the little slack. Yeah. But I don't think DLSS is going to be uh, this grand thing that's gonna really take them into the next generation and yeah. i don't think it's gonna be uh one of their talking points one of the little one of the bullet points when they release the console i mean it will be a bullet point but that's all it will be because nintendo never really i think it'll be a bullet point on like ign i well, don't think it'll be a bullet point on any of the marketing no nintendo they'll does. well they'll mention it like i don't even think they'll mention it in a in a press conference that's no, what I'm no, saying. No, they'll definitely mention it in a press conference but do you remember when they revealed the switch the press mm -hmm. conference they had for that and like the tech specs were really just like said matter of factly, like when they said, "Oh, this is a switch. Uh, it charges via USB C," and that was it. They moved on. That's like, what I'm saying. Yeah, like, I I'm saying I think DLSS isn't worth the footnote to them. Oh, I thought we were talking about like 1080p. Oh <laughs> like no, that absolutely yeah. it has. They have to say yeah. this one can do this resolution now. Yeah. If if it's a significant bump, yeah, which 1440p would be the more the more like intricate like tech specs of it like the chipset it uses the the wi-fi signal it uses whether it's four five or six or whatever right like all that stuff you know that's gonna have to be for like the journalists to like actually do some research and figure out exactly what it is yeah they're they're but, just gonna walk out on stage and say this can do this resolution now and look at how great the games are yeah nintendo's gonna be as very like not like try to hide it hmm. but like downplay it literally. and and now our controller fucking i, I don't know it could tickle you yeah <laughs> like, you know, some... we put the speaker back in the controller and mario yells at you all the time when you do bad the hd is now ultra hd rumble yeah. and uh it costs 200 dollars a joy con yes you will never be able to afford controllers again yes uh and that's it for the article right there yeah uh, that's we just have sources saying that uh, it's probably not going to have DLA yeah. as part of the DLSS package. Yeah, I still think uh, sometime next year we'll hear a little more information about mm -hmm. the Switch 2. Maybe we'll have a little trailer or something. I don't know yeah. when, though. It could be There's got to be like some sort of announcement. I mean, know? we don't have any Switch games coming out early next year, right? I don't think so. I, th I think uh, some sort of announcement after the holidays for sure. Mm-hmm. At the vet, like, I, we're not getting anything until the holidays are over. No. Yeah. Because they want people to buy the Switches mm -hmm. right now. Uh, by the way, everybody, uh, I was messing with things. So, uh, you know how sometimes there might be a little echo on the microphone? I need the chat to yell at me if you hear the <laughs> echo because I think I might have fixed it, but I won't know until it echoes again. So, anyway, uh, did I? No, I didn't. Nintendo, Nintendo Stan. He's really oh. going through a lot. This man. <laughs> Poor <laughs> Thank guy. you for the hundred bits. Uh, hi, Wolf Bros. Glad to be watching a podcast that isn't ending soon. <laughs> no. You can't kill us. 
Uh, Dark type. Thanks for the 32 months. I got off work early. I'm here, boys. I know Bob has a video on it, but what is Will's experience with the PlayStation Portal? So he captured my experience with the PlayStation Portal. He was in the video. I would, that was you know, his full experience with the Portal. It really was. Like, it was shockingly bad. And I know you touched upon it like a little bit in the video, but like my main idea, because I did ask him about it, because I do, I did want to start playing, you know, my PlayStation, you know, in the same room as my wife, not going to. You want to try? You want to take it for a week and try it? Okay, yeah, I'll you give it another it. shot. But like, well, like you touched. Everyone's saying there's an echo all of a sudden. Uh, are okay. you are you trolling? <laughs> is this a is this a gimmick? Are you are you are you having a lark? Yo, don't do that. I'm trying to tell a story here. How dare right. you do this while Will is talking? All right, there might just be a delay in our voices, apparently. Okay. Uh, you can keep talking. So what I'm trying to say is, as you mentioned in the video, you would expect a Sony first-party remote play device to work better than, like, using your phone or your laptop as a remote play device. Because it's like with... Uh, with AirPods. You can use any Bluetooth headphone for your iPhone, but because you're getting a an Apple first party Bluetooth headset, like the connection and the communication between the two devices is easier and just like works a little bit better. Because you know? it's proprietary. Yeah. 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 Like and you can still use AirPods on like Android phones. Mm -hmm. Like they still work as headphones, but because you know they're made by Apple, they work better with Apple products. So you would assume that a PlayStation handheld device made by Sony would work better with the PlayStation 5. Yeah, that was my biggest criticism, was yeah. that like this thing should only exist to uh, make that connection as seamless as possible, and yeah. it fails to do that. So, so <laughs> why would I ever want that? Also, uh, everybody's first criticism of, of that rev review is that yeah. my internet's bad. Right. I don't know what to tell you about yeah. that. The, 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 other than the Xbox Remote Play runs awesome yeah. in my house under the exact same conditions. I don't know. I don't know how to combat that. There's yeah. no way for me to just... You just have to take my word for it that the internet <laughs> is pretty good here. You know, yeah. I'm not going to say it's amazing because it's just Verizon. Yeah. But uh, it, it's... Still it's fiber, awkward. like I don't know. It's yeah. it's good. I got a good router. I have a whole video on the router that I have. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'd also like to. This is a good time to bring this up. IGN just tweeted this, and it's okay. a PlayStation Portal working on airplane Wi-Fi. I did see that. Now I saw this and I said bullshit, <laughs> and I was trying to see if maybe he's just playing a video on it somehow, mm -hmm. and like uh, I was trying to see if his inputs were like matching up. And it's hard to tell because it's just he's swinging in Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. uh, but what it seems like is happening here is that this is uh, an airplane that has Starlink satellite. Wi -Fi. Okay. Uh, another reason, I, I, mean, I mean, obviously, airplane Wi-Fi is horrible. Yeah. I've never had good airplane Wi-Fi. Uh, maybe once, like years ago. Yeah. Uh, but. For the most part, it's under one megabit per second, which is way under the uh, the, the, the recommendation yeah. or the requirement for PlayStation mm -hmm. Portal. Um, also, most airplane Wi-Fi blocks video, and this is video. It's yeah. streaming video, so they would probably block it. Um, also, most airplane Wi-Fi requires you to sign in, like like yeah. a, like a web page will come yeah. up, and then you'll have to do something. This doesn't have a web browser. Once you connect to the Wi-Fi, no web page will show up. Yeah. So this is very impractical. But supposedly this is an airplane that has Starlink uh, yeah. satellite Wi-Fi. I'm assuming there's no like login or anything. It's probably just like a yeah. like a password you type in. Uh, so it's possible this works. It's possible, yeah. but highly implausible. Yeah. Uh, but it looks like it works good. Also, he's got to be careful because if he tweets the wrong thing, then Elon Musk will just shut down the plane's Wi-Fi and he won't be able to play exactly. his ball. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, they're saying the echoes. Oh, the echo just went away. I uh, changed things so that there shouldn't have been an echo mm -hmm. minutes ago. But if it took that long, all right, yell at us again if there's an echo yeah. again. Uh, it shouldn't come back. That'd be really weird, right? I have. I, I. I am at a loss for what that echo could be. 
It just comes up randomly. Yeah. Hey, Will, my boyfriend needs to know how you feel about CM Punk's return. Uh, uh, why do people like him? Isn't he like a huge asshole? He is a huge asshole, but you have to understand something. He's he's very good at what he does. Okay. He's a very good wrestler. He's a very good uh, promo. Um, and you, like you got to understand, when he was at his uh, height of popularity in the WWE, that was at like when the WWE was the absolute worst it had ever been. And it's been bad a lot. And then he comes comes up and basically says, yeah, the product is bad. Like, <laughs> I know this. This is a terrible show. Why haven't you given me a shot? I, I'm just as good as all these other guys. And he was saying this on camera. And everyone was like, what is going on here? He's right. <laughs> we don't want to see John Cena wrestle a thousand times. Uh, and then, yeah, but also he's a huge asshole. So, okay. It can be both ways. You know, Hulk Hogan is every is a lot of people's favorite wrestler, but he's a known racist, and he <laughs> and he squashed a union uh, attempt. So, okay, squashed a union in WWE. Yeah, because Jesse Ventura was like, you know, we should be getting benefits and stuff for only oh. working for Vince. We should form a union. But he or was the favorite guy, and so then, he didn't want. And Hogan went, "Hey, brother, Ventura's trying to form a union, brother." So he tattletailed yeah. because he was doing. Because Hulk Hogan is a bitch. Uh. Wolf Den Dad says, I think Bob was in Japan too long. He looks like a Shogun tonight. This That's the only other type of person he's seen with a ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> well, it should be a little bit higher if you're going to do like the top knot look. So. And then Nezumi Nora says, Man Bun Desu. That's a, that's a Japanese joke. Yeah. It's a Japanese joke. Anyway, uh, let's talk about how the... Steam Deck blew up on somebody. I need to know this. <laughs> now I'm scared. Uh, now I'm afraid. Well, I think I know you have experience with uh video game consoles and cookware. <laughs> okay. So this this co this is along those lines. Okay, uh, all right. Yeah. I shouldn't it, be too it, scared. It just explode. Because I'm about to put one on my shelf forever. Uh-huh. On all of the yeah. time. I don't want the battery to explode. Uh, well, I think you'll be okay. Valve's Steam Deck is one of the most impressive handheld devices out right now. The company has even refreshed the Steam Deck with an OLED screen and a number of upgrades. You can play anything from Baldur's Gate 3 to Elden Ring on the system, making it easy to use and play wherever you might wherever you might be in your home. But one Redditor found out that the Steam Deck isn't quite heat-proof after leaving it on a warm stovetop. <laughs> but by the time the user realized it, it was too late and the Steam Deck's outer shell had already melted significantly. What the f- You know what? Uh, all right, before we go <laughs> any, fo any further, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here. I don't know anything about this, but here's uh -huh. my assumption, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're going to accidentally put your- uh, it put anything on a stovetop. It's got to be electric because you you never know. Yeah. It's got to be flat. Uh-huh. And you got to have, like, no room in your apartment. You know, right. like, you just you got no room. Sometimes you got to put things up there. So, you know, you've seen my kitchen. It's a small yeah. kitchen. And yeah, I, yeah. But I have a gas stovetop. Mm -hmm. So, my mother-in-law actually got us for our anniversary. It's called a noodle board. And it's basically just a plank of wood that you put on top of the stove so that you can put things on top of yeah. the stove. Okay. Um, you're we not used to, in my old apartment. We used to put things like a pizza box. We would put the pizza. We, we would order pizza and then put the whole box yeah. on top of the stove. Yeah. And that's flammable, but just don't turn the stove on. Yeah, it's the same yeah. thing. Wood is flammable, so <laughs> you're not supposed to put it on. <laughs> it's warm, and, but sometimes if I'm in a rush, I'll put it on while it's warm. So there's that. So it is possible to you know, even the noodle board can get very so warm. And I could see. I mean, it's a horrible idea. Yes, but I could see why. Some wood would put something on the stove, yeah. like like a Steam Deck. Yes, if you if you're not paying attention. Uh, the damage to the Steam Deck was thankfully seemingly not impacted too much of the system's internal construction, even though the user might want to get a new battery and casing. Responding to a message, he states, uh, "It's actually in better shape than it looks. The case does a good job of protecting the internals. Wow. I already bought a new backplate. I figure even if Valve agrees to repair it, I can put it on when I get the deck back." Yeah, honestly. That looks great. I yeah. mean, it, luckily, it was right over uh, the uh, SOC, which yeah. is... Uh, the worst part. Yeah, but that has a heat shield. Yeah. So, really, the most damage is on the little tin foil that, like, yeah. uh, uh, protects the uh, SOC. 
heat from getting out. Yeah. Um, and the back plate is the easiest thing to swap out. Yeah. Especially if you're not changing the front plate. So I think he's good, man. Yeah. I think he's good to go. As, if he says it works. Yeah. I um, want to get a new battery and casing. Yeah. It should be noted that the melted plastic gives off toxic fumes. So okay, uh, the well, article yeah. hopes the Redditor in question is also appropriately ventilated their home after the incident. Also, remember that while using your Steam Deck, just be wary of any warm surfaces, especially stovetops. The battery looks fine. Yeah. I think I think he's good, man. Yeah. It's a good thing I fixed it. Sells all the parts you need. <laughs> yeah, but again, I think he just needs uh a new back plate and a uh, new like a uh, thermal shielding. Yeah. Like that I think you can just use uh uh like that tin duct tape. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. What I'm talking about like the air conditioner mm -hmm. tape. I think you just use that and you're good. It's not even like a requirement to use yeah. something like that. It'll just get hot. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Alvo, thank you for the Prime subscription. Uh, let's keep plowing through stories here because yeah. there are a lot here and we started late. Okay. So, and I've been forgetting to unbox all that shit. So, <laughs> so let's go. Let's go. All right. Nintendo launches adults only app in Japan. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, oh, also Martin Zelly. Thank you for the seven months. Bob, when are we getting new shirts? Uh, who, who You get a desk mat. <laughs> Fucking relax. Turn that into a shirt. Buy four Holy of them shit. and make a shirt out of that. Give me a second. <laughs> All right. Uh, porn game. Nintendo has a porn game. Yes. Uh, I just want to say that we're talking about Nintendo's adults only app and the ad on the side is for uh, Trojan Magnum Raw. Raw. The thinnest. <laughs> I'm getting condoms for a reason. <laughs> Why are they called raw? Because <laughs> they're the thinnest possible. They're the thinnest. That's magnums. a different thing. That's yeah. not raw. <laughs> uh. That's on the chat. <laughs> Nintendo launches adults-only app in Japan. Fans of Nintendo games from the era of the N64 have been eagerly anticipating being able to play those same games on Switch. It's likely a majority of older crowd that make up that fan base, but some young fans may be surprised to find out they won't be able to access certain N64 titles at all. Nintendo Japan is working on an app for the console subscription service Switch Online that will only be available to 18 plus users. The adult oh, we talked about uh, well, no, we talked about it after the show. Yeah, yeah, we didn't talk about it on no. the show. We've, we found out about this yeah. right after the show ended last week. The adults only app is designed to offer not all but some N64 titles. The company announced in a promotional video. As of right now, the adult the adults only app will offer just two titles: uh, GoldenEye and Jet Force Gemini. The reasons for these titles being offered on a different app than other N64 games boils down to Japan's content rating system. Since both of those games are shooters, they hold a Z rating in Japan compared oh. to the US where they are both rated T. Uh, following that logic, it's probable that any other shooters being adapted for release on Switch Online will also be restricted to the 18 plus app. The app is exclusive to Japan um, for the time being. Fans will have to wait and see if the US as well as other countries will get their own adults only app for R rated content. It's interesting because there's like two sides to this. On one side, Japan is really open with like uh, racy content, like sexual yeah. content and, and cursing and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're like pretty open with that. Uh, on the other hand, we uh on the other hand they make it 18 plus yeah which is way higher than it was in america yeah but in america uh we have the ao rating yeah which will not be carried in stores right so if anything they, they try not to make anything overrated m yeah. uh and i think there's some wheeling and dealing going on that keeps things m and not anything higher than m some things yeah uh because if it's if it's AO, it's it's not going to be covered. It's not going to be in Best Buy or Target yeah. or anything. Um, but in Japan, eighteen plus might be in stores like that. Yeah. So uh, it's not really a big deal if it's eighteen plus. Mm -hmm. But uh, it made it so that they needed a whole new app. Yeah. Uh, a whole new Nintendo Switch Online app for 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 that. Um, this 
gave me some oh this uh made me think maybe that's why they didn't get golden eye when we got golden eye because they needed yeah, a whole new yeah. version of the app in order to get golden eye and they were like oh well jeff wars gemini is also yeah 18 plus so we might so now as well. that we have a bunch of games we can so then if so the article said that both of those games are shooters and that's why it got a certain rating yeah. that's why it's getting in the adults app uh what's the game sin and punishment is also a shooter but that was a launch title as far as i know for switch online even in japan are they real guns no but it's still a shooting game like jeff force gemini also doesn't use real guns so it makes what's the difference between well, aren't they like lasers and shit yeah but it's still so it's, it's there's lasers in jet force gemini too are there real guns also in Jet Force Gemini? No, it's all like sci-fi weapons. Yeah, but is it like Alien where like they like shoot real bullets? I don't think so. There must be some sort of part of the rating system is uh uh with the type of weaponry. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. like like weapons. Like and yeah. you know, here in America we don't give a shit if it's a real gun or not. Yeah. That's part of our culture, goddamn yeah. it. Yeah. America. Uh Japanese game ratings and guns. <laughs> Famitsu scores is the first thing that comes up. <laughs> uh, uh, here's the Japanese box art for Sin and Punishment. It doesn't say the rating on it. Uh, I found a, a thread for why Infamous is rated Z in japan and they okay. said probably because of the electricity which can be seen as more violent and torturous Ooh, interesting what's the ratings board in japan zero yeah c-e-r-o okay yeah oh was sin and punishment not rated that's weird. oh it's b b b does it say for what uh Halo 3 was a zero D rating in Japan. Right. Interesting. Oh, this is the this is the sequel Star Successor was a B. Uh someone in the chat earlier while you're looking that up, somebody in the chat earlier uh linked me to a Costco sale 14 terabyte Seagate, 150 bucks. That's good. But it sold out. Oh. It's out of stock. Thanks for getting my hopes up, <laughs> asshole. Let's see here. So Ciro, the Computer Entertainment Rating Organization in Japan, uh, games are rated A, B, C, D, and Z. Okay. And it looks like... Oh, here we go. Uh, so Ciro A is all ages. B is 12 and above. C is 15 and above. D is 17 and older. And Z is 18 and above only uh, expressions and content suitable only for 18 years old and above included in the game. This assumes that the game should not be sold or distributed to those younger than 18 years old. Okay. So are there any requirements for being 18 plus? Um, does it say? Not expl here. Let me see if I can find more detail. KJX is the 14 terabyte Seagate is available in stores. They also have like, uh, so you know how like the ESRB like will list of uh, you know strong violence, cartoon violence, blood, whatever. They also have something like that. They have little symbols. And <laughs> their symbols are love, sexual content, violence, horror, drinking and smoking, gambling, crime, controlled crime. substances, language, and others. And they got little like cartoons for every all. Oh, it's really kind of cute. Everything's cute. In like Japan. horror, it's got a ghost. <laughs> Yeah, everything's awesome. Yeah. Did you know that, you know that, like, everything plays a jingle in Japan? Oh, like, yeah? There's always a jingle, like, everything. <laughs> uh, that's why your dryer has a jingle. It's probably yeah. Japanese. Um, am, uh, yeah, I got Samsung, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, isn't that Korean? Yes. Same thing. I know. Uh, I, I have two. I have a wash. My washer, I think, is LG, and my Samsung is the dryer. So. No, the other way around. <laughs> there's a jingle... The, all the train stations do a little jingle when the train yeah. comes or whatever. There's a different jingle for every train station. Wow. Yeah. Or it might be every line, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure it's every station yeah. has its own different jingle. Yeah. That means a guy had to make hundreds of jingles. Yeah. 
Um, Dumb question, but I assume that's an HDD. Yes, it is a hard disk drive. Creating ratings also have images. Yeah, there's a whole like, you know, rate how the rating system works on the Ciro. Ciro.gr.jp. I'm just, so, I was expecting guns to be on there. Uh, categories of representation to be covered by the rating. Uh, antisocial act expression type, description of crime, controlled substance such as narcotics, abuse, illegal drinking, illegal gambling, uh, sexual crime. Uh, well, here, violence expression type, depictions of animated blood, depictions of mutilated body cutting, depictions of a corpse, killing or wounding, horror, descriptions of versus beat em up game slash fighting. So there's nothing explicitly about uh, the use of firearms. Okay, it, mu it must be the violence. Yeah. But I guess uh, there's not enough violence in Sin and Punishment. Yeah. Because I guess they're all creatures and stuff. I guess. And it, do you kill a person in Jeff Force Gemini? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't remember. Everyone's making a big stink about the Echo again. I, <sighs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Thought I fixed it. I mean, I fixed it in the last couple of weeks. I tried to... The problem is I, I'm making a dance between having this echo every once in a while or having our, our audio be delayed right? slightly. So I'm trying to mitigate both of those, but it happens when you both talk at the same time. Hmm. Uh, is that a filter issue? Because I had a cop. I, another issue that I have is in my fucking with things, I deleted your microphone and had to redo everything. <laughs> yes. So that... That sucked. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on. Okay. Uh, did I thank everybody? I think I did. Go ahead. Okay. Xbox Series X and S sales have collapsed. Oh, no. It's, it's no secret that Microsoft has lost the console war, but the scale of Xbox's collapse in Europe in particular is stark. According to fresh data reported by GI.biz, Sony's PlayStation 5 is comfortably number one in Europe with sales up an incredible 143% over October last year. The near seven-year-old Nintendo Switch is uh, second despite a 20% drop in sales year on year, but the Xbox Series X and S have seen a whopping 52% drop in sales. Even month-on-month -month comparisons are tough for Xbox. PS5 sales are up 11% in October compared to September. Switch sales are up 10%, uh, and Xbox sales are down just 20%. Uh, GI.biz noted that Xbox's big exclusive Starfield launched in September, whereas PlayStation had Spider-Man 2 and Nintendo had Super Mario Bros. Wonder in October. Both games broke sales records. So why do Xbox Series X and S continue to struggle in Europe? What's caused such a dramatic console sale collapse? There are a number of theories. Speaking to IGN for a follow-up, GI.biz um, head of gaming head of games B2B uh, Chris Dring painted a grim picture of Xbox's fortunes across Europe. The sheer absence of available console stock last year does skew these figures quite a bit, he said. Um, and it's worth noting that Eurozone countries have never been Xbox's strongest territories. They revealed back in February they only hold 20% of the market versus PlayStation's 80. However, even in the UK, which is a market where Xbox is a lot more competitive, it's been a tough year with Series X and S sales down 23% year to date. The reality is the console has very little momentum, which is such a crucial element when it comes to how successful a generation is or isn't for a platform holder. One issue often cited by gamers is Xbox's lack of big hitting exclusives. While Starfield launched in September and hit 10 million players in less than three weeks, Bethesda's expansive sci-fi RPG does not appear to have moved the needle in terms of console sales. By Microsoft's own admission, it hasn't done a good enough job of pumping out first-party hits. Um, Halo Infinite, which launched a year late in November 2021, was a big disappointment. Arcane's Redfall was a disaster it's still struggling to recover from. Smaller games, such as Hi-Fi Rush and Peniment, were critically acclaimed but not system sellers. The lack of big exclusives is often cited for why this has happened, and some of the big games like Halo Infinite didn't provide the boost you might expect. Drink continued. A lot of unre unreasonable pressure was put on Starfield, and it did cause some sales improvement, but it hasn't been sustained. Uh, I feel like we always see these articles 
about Xbox sales not doing good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised when they do do good. And, and I think, didn't we just hear that this, well, they, they had good sales recently? This is Europe. Yeah. So last week we had an article about how uh, Xbox was gonna has good sales for the first time beating Sony, mm-hmm. but that was because they had just acquired Activision. So they were inclu- oh. when you include the purchase of Activision, all the sales. Did that go through? That though? went through. Yeah, it and a, it's done. It's done. It's approved. Well, it's approved, but don't doesn't it take a while for it to actually? Happen? It takes a while for it to be like official, official. Yeah, like, 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 can they include Activision sales as part of their sales? I think already? they can. Interesting. Because Call, yeah. that means Call of Duty is yeah, part well, of their sales. Yeah, that means Call of Duty, you know, is the best-selling game of the year, which means Microsoft had the best-selling game of the year. Okay. Technically. Okay. Yeah, because that's, that's what last week's article was talking about. Yes, Xbox now officially sells more games than PlayStation because they own Activision. Right. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I'm not surprised when Xbox... Console sales do bad in uh, countries that aren't America. Yeah. It's an American company. It's like the only American game company. Well, you also... The thing is, like, you always hear about, you know, Xbox does well in America. They do terrible in Japan. Like, Xbox notoriously does not do well in Japan. Right. But, like, you never hear about Europe. They're the third biggest market, you know, for games. Maybe the second, Mm -hmm. you know. And you don't really hear about, like, how anyone's doing over there. So... I, but I feel like that's a good indication of how things are going in this country, you know, because as far as I know, more people are buying PS5s than they are Xboxes. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, Xbox was only ever on top here during the 360 era. Yeah. And they weren't on top in any other country. I think it was just us. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know for sure, but well, I know in Japan they were not. No. I know it was still PlayStation. No. Even though well, PlayStation what happened was, was weird shit. Yeah. They were on top here. And then Sony caught up he, even here. Mm-hmm. And so their worldwide sales for both systems are about equal mm-hmm. for PS3 and 360. So even like when Xbox was on top, it didn't last very long. Right. So yeah, I think that they uh, don't care about that. Like they're transitioning away from the traditional console wars. <sighs> they're transi- I feel like they're transitioning away because they have to. Yeah. You know, yeah. not because they want to. Yeah, they're I think, changing their strategy. I think up a to lot say they this, don't this care generation. is a little disingenuous because, like, obviously they want to sell as many Xboxes as possible. So I, that's the easiest way to get Microsoft in your living room. But that's that's not working right now. Yeah, they would they would like to make more money. Yes, yeah. for sure. But they they're changing their strategy so that this matters less to them. Yeah. Than than uh, than. Uh, other console manufacturers yeah. they're trying to keep everybody in their ecosystem xbox is like look our ecosystem isn't a walled garden you can do whatever you want yeah. in our ecosystem and then they secretly impose their yeah walled garden on you like making you wait for game pass day one games that mm-hmm. aren't really day one and, and, and making and shit like that making you buy proprietary memory cards instead proprietary of proprietary memory any- cards uh, SSD you want the new thing where like they're cutting off certain controllers that aren't approved by them making certain games only available on their storefront instead of other storefronts yeah I'm gonna have more Pokemon cookies okay yeah, this this was this one was worse <laughs> this one tasted stale are the cookies act like actively getting worse I think so GMO free gluten free Maybe put some more GMOs in it. Maybe put some more gluten in it. <laughs> yeah. Good source of vitamin D. I do need the vitamin D, though. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so that's that. That's Xbox. Mm-hmm. Good, good for them. I'm still sitting here waiting for them to make a, a Windows uh, overlay or a Windows UI for handhelds. Because I got all these Windows yeah. handhelds, and you know what? I like them a lot. But tapping on the screen to get into things is a, is is very annoying. You know, I It'd remember be a lot like, better if there was the an Windows UI. Eight like Metro UI. I know it was not very well liked and stuff, but for a touch screen, like that was good. That was the, the oh yeah. 8, yeah oh yeah. I remember this. 
that was the transition. They they yeah, were trying. They were to trying make it work. I had that on my uh, Microsoft Surface. Yeah, and, for, and you know what? I would always hit the start button so that this would go away. <laughs> <laughs> but like you can see what they're like the big icons, so your fat fingers can just like hit it. Yeah, and it would launch fine. This was a start. Yeah, yeah. Really, what they they shouldn't really do something like this. It needs to be needs to design it like they would a console menu. Yeah, Steam Big Picture mode. Yeah. Or what I mean, you know what though? The Xbox One or the Xbox Series UI is very similar to this. Yes. The Xbox One UI was exactly this. Yes. The Series UI is very similar mm-hmm. to this still. Um yeah, it would be very easy for them to make a make a console like UI for Windows. Yeah. I just want it to show me like all of the the applications that I would want just on my home screen, yeah. but but accessible with a controller. Yeah. That would be great. Just like the Steam Deck has, just like mm-hmm. Steam Big Picture Mode has. I'm this close to making my... I've been playing a lot on the Lenovo, and I'm this close to making Steam Big Picture Mode the default. Yeah. Because then you can also add non-Steam games to Steam. Yeah. So Big Picture... It's just basically a Steam Deck. Yeah. I, I, just, I just have a Windows Steam Deck. I think I'm going to do that. But then I have to disable the, the Lenovo like launcher. Yeah. Which isn't that... I, I haven't even given it a chance <laughs> just because it doesn't give you the games yeah. first it gives you like some weird menu and like i don't want that i want the i want all of my apps right you know? so i think i'm gonna just put steam on it anyway uh what do we talk about now uh sony facing an eight uh 7.9 billion dollar lawsuit oh let's see this let's see what they're guilty of now uh this is from reuters because it's business oh. uh Sony Official. Sony must face a massive lawsuit worth up to 6.3 billion pounds or 7.9 billion American dollars over claims that the PlayStation maker abused its dominant position leading to unfair prices for consumers, a London tribunal ruled on Tuesday. When they say tribunal, it makes it sound like, like uh, Illuminati-esque, you know? Like this is it, too legit. This is too this, businessy this for too us? This is too Okay. Yeah. Um, Sony Interactive Entertainment was sued last year on behalf of nearly 9 million people in the United Kingdom who had bought digital games or add-on content through Sony's PlayStation Store. Alex Neal, a consumer advocate who has worked on previous campaigns, is bringing the case against Sony, which is valued at up to £5 billion uh, or $6.23 billion plus interest. Her lawyers said the aggregate... The aggregated damage estimated of the case is up to 6.3 billion pounds in court filings last month. She says the company abused its dominant position by requiring digital games and add-ons to be bought and sold only via the PlayStation Store, which charges a 30% commission to developers and publishers. The claim alleges that consumers uh, have therefore paid higher prices for games and add-on content than they, uh, than they uh, would have done. Sony's lawyers argued the case was flawed from the start and said it should be thrown out. The Competition Appeal Tribunal, there's that word again, ruled that Neil's case could continue, though it said people who had made PlayStation Store purchases after the case was filed in 2022 should be removed from the proposed claimant uh, class. Uh, Neil said in a statement on Tuesday's ruling uh, was the first step in ensuring consumers get back what they're owed. Sony did not immediately respond to comment. So, basically, higher prices for games and add-on content than they would have. What they're what they're implying is, if you want to buy a digital game, yeah, you can only get it from Sony. You can only download the oh, game, yeah. yeah, from the PlayStation Store. That's it. There's no Wh- other way. To- whereas in the past, you could like go to GameStop and be like, "Can I get?" Uh, a digital code yeah the call of duty map pack they used to sell them on amazon the digital codes that was i think a legal requirement i think they only did that because they legally had to or else it would be a a weird monopoly but now they don't they don't do that anymore you can only get playstation games on the playstation store and because of that you know sony controls that marketplace so they can charge whatever they want Mm -hmm. which leads to which does lead to unfair competition because you know if if I could buy the game from Amazon, maybe I can get it cheaper from Amazon. Yeah. You no. Know? But instead, I'm forced to pay higher prices. And publishers and developers are forced to, you know, lose 30% of their sales to Sony. Uh, Savage in the chat says, EU has simply been trying to subsidize co- country cash flow via tech lawsuits. Interesting. 
they do seem to sue a lot of tech companies. But the thing is, I mean, we also have a lot of tech lawsuits going on, yeah. but I feel like uh, there could be more mm -hmm. because uh, I think Sony's doing this because they figured it's worth the money that they would gain versus the money that they're going to have to pay in fines to get in trouble. For yeah. It. They, they know that it's illegal to do what they're doing. Right. Um, but I, I think that the EU right now is doing a lot more to break up monopolies than, uh, yeah. than what America has been yeah. doing. And that's supposed to be our job. It's supposed yeah. to be our thing is to the, the a lot of these come, I mean, Sony, Sony's not an American company, but a lot no. of these companies are our companies that, uh, the EU is like you can't be doing this yeah. shit. You know? That's these are regulations that our country should be should be yeah. trying to do. Um but yeah, it makes sense. I mean, we've noticed that that uh they've pulled some like point cards and and uh, uh ways to buy digital goods, uh yeah. pulled out that ability from other stores. Um Epic Games was suing Apple for similar yeah. things. Uh I feel like this is familiar. Sony, people were mad at Sony about this, but of course nothing got done here. Yeah. They had to get done in the EU. Anyway, uh, tell me about why we're talking about the Amico. Oh, oh, they're still trying <laughs> just when you thought it was safe. Is it they? Or what? is it just the one guy, Tommy Tellerico? Well, I don't think Tommy Tellerico is involved in it anymore. Or if he is, like they basically told him, you need to stop. You need to shut up and let an adult try to save this company. Okay. Um, yeah, because he has he's been like radio silent for like a year on this. Um, anyway, Intellivision's long delayed Amico retro gaming system uh, isn't going to arrive anytime soon. The company says it doesn't have enough money to build the console in volume. Intellivision unveiled the Amico in 2018, said it would arrive two years later, and raised millions of uh, raised millions of dollars from folks who put down a refundable hundred dollar deposit. Since then, Intellivision has faced disaster after disaster, and there's still no indication of when the system is coming out. To make the console finally happen, though, the company needs money. Intellivision revealed its latest plan to help it raise funds earlier this year, an app uh, an app that's said to ape the experience of the Amico on Android and iOS devices. The Amico... So can, can you explain something to me? Yes. Our friend Jake yes. has the app. Yes. Ex explain that to me. I, Why does he have the app? He said it was a morbid curiosity. Okay. Which is which is fine. That's it's fair. What does the app do? It let's, aids the console? Let's, but the console's not out yet. Let's let's uh, read and find out. Okay. Okay. So there's the Amico Home app, which debuted in beta on Android this week, and it's bizarre to say the least. Oh, this to, week. Okay. Yeah. To use Amico Home, you will likely need at least two Android phones or tablets, uh, or one of each. Uh, one display one displays the game and you use the other as the controller. Alternatively, you can use a quote real Amico controller. If you can hook up the former to your TV via HDMI, you can play the games on the big screen. Hold on. Two phones. Yes. Okay, you need two. You need two phones. Or a tablet. Or a, tablet. a phone or a tablet. Yeah. One displays the game. Yes. And you use the other as a controller. Okay. Yes. All right. So so can you play Amico games on a, a phone right now? Is that what's happening? You ha you can play Amico games on two phones. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't need the console yet. You yet, can, you can yet. play without the console at all. Correct. Okay. You just need a phone and a second and a phone. phone. <laughs> you, <laughs> you need, need a phone and phones. a phone. Okay. All right. There are only two games available on the Amico Home at the minute. Uh, there are updated versions of Missile Command from 1980 and Astro Smash from 1981. What the fuck is Astro Smash? Exactly. Despite the fact Amico Home is in beta, Intellivision somehow reckons it's just fine to charge $15 for them while calling the app an affordable way to enjoy family gaming entertainment. Astro Smash is Space Invaders, but they are asteroids coming down at you. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's, that's I mean, that makes, the game. At 1981, yeah, that makes sense that that would be a game. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know if that screams the hot new thing that you're going to want. $15. Yeah. I don't know if that's $15. Also, Missile Command, remember that? Yeah. So what's an updated version of Missile Command look like? <sighs> Whatever it is, it's going to suck because Missile Command already like looks cool, even mm -hmm. for like a 1980 game. 
I don't reckon that like their version is going to look any better. Recharge is that the name of it? I think so. Missile Command Recharge by Atari. So no, this is in television. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, those who pre-ordered the console can get Amico Home download codes for certain games, but that's not exactly going to help in television's bottom line. It seems highly unlikely that Amico Home would get even close to generating enough revenue for Intellivision to make an Amico reality. Uh, Kotaku tried out Amico Home and called it one janky piece of crap. <laughs> Still, Intellivision hopes the app will at least be successful enough to secure some investment for the console. Not oh, a no. single person looked at this and was like, maybe there's better options. Like, yeah. like you are putting out a console to compete with every console that exists right now. Yeah. Why would anybody want this and would want to play games in this way? There, There's 100% a market for like an Intellivision system. Just a basic ass in television system that plays in television games, and like you know what you want to throw like a, a, a graphical update over them, fine. Like that's fine. A hundred bucks, people will buy. I think it. you lose the market there just by doing that, having them updated because you, yeah, you you, run, you're getting the nostalgia crowd. Right, you do run that risk, but there, you still have a better chance of people buying and accepting that than you do trying to create. Because that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to create a competitor to Nintendo, mm -hmm. specifically Nintendo. And you're not going to do that with the finances that you have. Even if like everything works smoothly, that's just not the reality that was going to happen. You need Sony money. You need Microsoft money. Yeah. It, you, it, fucking it, Sega it, money, it, even. This is, at most... Uh, the market that like an Atari, like the VCS or whatever yeah. it was called, like or, that is gonna. It's the same. It's that market. Yeah, yeah. But you know, they weren't targeting that market. They thought this was gonna be the next week. People are saying the echoes back. Does it go away if I do that? Did my echo just go away? Uh, did, did, is it back now? What happened? You tell me. Uh, it did go away. Okay. Did it go away when I said that? Gone? It's more on Will's mic. Does Hi, Will have an I'm echo? I'm Will. Am I echoing here? Do you hear an echo? And does his echo go away? Keep talking. Okay, I'm going to keep talking. It's still there. Yes. No, wait. Now it's back. Yes. Seems like when you guys get loud, it echoes. Well, I'm sorry that it's loud sometimes. You have to understand, we were raised in a Sicilian household. All we do is talk loudly. We just talk through walls. Uh, it's gone. It's gone. It's back. Okay, so it's there's a, there's a weird mismatch between our two microphone tracks. Is, mm -hmm. is what's happening. Every once in a while, they just like they just like desync from each other. Okay, and I don't know. I don't know what that could be. I gotta I gotta figure that out. Okay. Uh, I think it's when it cuts to Will's camera. I don't know because like. So OBS picks up all of the cameras as audio source sources, but I have all of those audio sources muted. So right. It should, and they and I'm looking at those, and they're not coming up as it, nothing's going through them. So okay, I think it might be just a coincidence that when you talk, uh, the camera cuts to you, and then also sometimes the audio gets all weird. Okay, it could be that when the scene switches, it makes the audio from the microphones desync. Okay, I I don't, I don't know. It tends to do that, but not always. Seems like when there's a loud part and when you talk at the same time and then moves to Will. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, everyone's saying it's you, but I don't know. I got I to gotta do more fucking with. Yeah. This also only started when we got this new this new guy. <laughs> so, all... all uh, audio interfaces have horrible like software like yeah. like there's like no settings or anything there's like a thing you need to download and it's like it, there's there's no options on it yeah it just comes and goes i'll have to figure i'll have to rewatch this and see right. what exactly is triggering it's it. gone now so we'll see was that just because i was silent for like 
a few seconds. I, I it they were saying it could be when we get loud. Yeah. Uh Okay. Anyway, that anything else about the amico who gives a, sh- a shit about the stupid amico? Uh, I just think it's funny that they're still trying. Yeah, you know? no, that's ridiculous. Uh, I mean, they did put so much money into it that they kind of have to now. Yeah, there's like no backing out now. Yeah, uh, but yeah, they need to scale it down like dramatically because this is never going to be anything more than what Atari could have made or would have made in the past. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're already screwed up because they had to start selling off the rights to some games in order to get some money. And that right there is like a big faux pas because no one gives a damn about these games individually. But if you sell them all together and then you have the Intellivision collection, that's something. Yeah, You sell Astro Smash by itself. Nobody cares about Astro Smash yeah, by yeah. itself. All right, next. Uh, Grand Theft Auto guy uh, leaked all of Grand Theft Auto 6. Not exactly. A former Rockstar developer claims the company uh, made him remove recently posted information about canceled projects. Former technical director Obe Vermeji from Ver- Vermeige. Vermeige, that's it. That's my word. Uh, who spent 14 years with Rockstar North before leaving in 2009, recently shared alleged details on abandoned Rockstar games, including its canceled PlayStation spy game, Agent. However, in a new blog post, uh, Vermage says Rockstar contacted him and told him to remove the posts. Today, November 22nd, uh, 2023, I got an email from Rockstar North, he wrote. Um, Apparently, some of the OGs there were upset about my blog. Uh, I genuinely don't think anyone would mind me talking about 20-year-old games, but I was wrong. Something about ruining the Rockstar mystique or something. Anyway, this blog isn't important enough to piss me off. This, this blog isn't important enough uh, to me to piss off my former colleagues in Edinburgh, so I'm winding it down. I'll maybe just leave a few articles with anecdotes that don't affect anyone but me. I would love for Rockstar to open up about development of the trilogy themselves, um, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. Maybe I'll try again in a decade or two. Uh, Vermage's now deleted post included alleged information on the studio's spy game agent, which was announced as a PlayStation 3 exclusive at E3 2009. I don't remember it being announced. I remember hearing about it recently. Yeah, I didn't know this was no, this was like a this was actually announced. Like they had a a teaser trailer for it and everything uh, that you're showing right now. Literally just a logo. Yeah. Well, no, there's. Well, yeah, the trailer was like a was the logo. (laughs) Okay. Um, The game was planned to take place in the 70s during the Cold War, but Vermeer says it ultimately abandoned for being too much of a distraction from the company's work on Grand Theft Auto. He said the original plan was to split Rockstar North into two teams with half working on GTA 4 and the other half working on Agent, uh, which was codenamed Jimmy. (laughs) The game... (laughs) Codenamed Jimmy. Uh, The game was set to be in the 70s, a more linear than GTA with a number of locations. He claimed there was a French Meridian City, a Swiss ski resort, Cairo. And at the end, there would be a big shootout with lasers in space. Nice. Uh, Vermeer also spoke about another canceled project, which was going to use the GTA Vice City engine repurposed to make a zombie game set on a remote Scottish island. Um, it was decided that the project was depressing and worked to move straight to GTA San Andreas. Do you think Agent was supposed to be their take on Goldeneye? Definitely their take on like James Bond Cause, in general. Because no one was doing good James Bond. Yeah, not at the time. So I mean you had like uh you had the Nightfall. E- and you stuff. had the EA yeah. games, yeah, but this was um, this was going to be a PlayStation Three game. And that was like right. the Activision era of James Bond. Yeah, and they so, were bad. Yeah, they, yeah, they were not good. There, there was a, a a hole in the market for something like that. Yeah, no, so I, this could have been really good. Yeah, and like Rockstar, like you see throughout all their work, they have like a fondness for like seventies era cinema, and so like this something like this was right up their alley. Mm-hmm. It was announced, and then like it went dark, and then quietly canceled. And I think this is still like the great lost you know work that they never put out. What was the other stuff that uh, the guy talked about in his blog? Uh, the, the, the article didn't really mention any of the I think stuff that was talked about. I guess they're afraid to get in trouble. Yeah. Uh, I think he also... Let's see here. Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, so there was the agent, codenamed Jimmy, <laughs> because it was a James Bond game... Uh, set in scotland 
Oh no, James Jimmy is the Scottish version of James. That's why it was called Project Jimmy. Oh, uh, okay. because it was for James Bond. Okay. Uh, right. Let's see here. It wasn't the game wasn't progressing as well as it was hoped, and the whole company just went behind uh, GTA Four. I'm looking at uh, the list of Rockstar games that have been uh, published. Uh, the games that they have published in recent years. Yeah. Uh, they haven't had a miss. Uh, the last game that I haven't heard of was in 2009. Mm -hmm. Beater Raider. I've seen this box art before. I know I that that was like their, that was with Timbaland and there was like a, it was a beatbox. Timberland? I think it's supposed to be. It was a beatbox uh, generator. You can make beats with it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. iOS and PlayStation Portable. Yeah. Uh, then more Grand Theft Auto. Midnight Club, people like those games. Bully, Manhunt 2, people like that. Bully, uh, Midnight Club again. The Warriors, everybody loves The Warriors. I love that game. Midnight Club again. Red Dead Redemption, Manhunt. Midnight Club again. Smuggler's Run. Yes. Do people like that? Uh, 2002. That's the only uh, Rockstar game they put out on GameCube. Oh. Yeah. Also, The Italian Job, which is 2002. That was them? This was probably uh, the lowest... It's been. been no, if you scroll years. back a little bit more, they did all Austin Powers games on the GBA. I that was yeah. some of the first ones that they yeah. had, but I'm saying like, since 2002, they haven't had a miss. Yeah, you know, because like, what did uh, when did GTA 3 come out? 2002, right? Or 2001? Max Payne came out 2001. Okay. GTA 3 came out 20 2002. 2002. Wait, that says Windows. 2000 and This is uh look look at how look at how the table is. It's like cut off. I think it's oh. 2001. Okay. PlayStation 2. See the table's like split there. Yeah. Yeah, so the top it would be the top one. 2001 then. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 2001. So since 2001 on, that's when we got the rock stars we know it today. Mm -hmm. We're like they're very selective about their projects. They do like I don't want to say auteur driven stuff, but they only do stuff that interests them. Yeah, and they had some amazing yes. offshoots that were not offshoots, but games that were not Grand Theft Auto. Yes. They had some amazing games that were not Grand Theft Auto. Yes. And now all they make is Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. And if you want to say, well, what about Red Dead Redemption? It's that's Grand, Grand Theft, Theft Auto, Auto <laughs> but with horses. Yeah, it's the so. same thing. Uh they they had a long stint of games that were uh like tests, like small I don't want to say smaller, yeah. but they were smaller than Grand Theft Auto. Mm -hmm. They were uh, smaller games as tests for mechanics that would eventually end up in a Grand Theft Auto yeah. game. Uh, and that I think was really cool to see. And we're not gonna, we, we're not getting that anymore. No. We're not getting that from Rockstar. Well, because I think, you know, Rockstar for how, how much money they have, like they could afford to fart out Agent right now mm -hmm. if they wanted to. They could make Agent because they have all the money in the world, but. Even their victim too, they can only make big games now. And they have to make big games that sell. You know, it's yeah. why every Activision game turns into Call of Duty. That's why every EA game, if it's not a sports game, then it has to be, you know, Battlefield or something along those lines. It's kind of ridiculous that they can afford to just not make money for five years <laughs> and well, then release a banger they make a lot of money from gta online yeah they do they do but still for they make enough money for how many thousands of people to work at the company yeah <laughs> like still that money's got that money that grand theft auto 6 is gonna make them has to last them a really long time yeah anyway uh we got another notification right bro to various thank you for the prime uh, let's plow through some of the rest of this. Bethesda responds to negative Starfield review. Okay, this I can just... Uh, just read their response or whatever. Well, let me read the review first. Okay. So, a user posted on Steam about Starfield. Uh, boring and overrated. This is a wide universe to explore filled with mostly with empty planets. I understand they have to do that um, to sell you on the idea that this is a whole universe, but that doesn't make the game more fun. You can land on any planet and explore a copy-paste of locations... You will see the exact same locations from one end of the universe to the other and everywhere in between. A hodgepodge of messy, slapped together mechanics, bloated skill trees, exploring, in quotes, crafting, base building, 
an RPG, an FPS, a space opera. Starfield doesn't know what it wants to be as wide as the ocean and as deep as a puddle. You can explore everywhere, but why would you want to? So Th- Bethesda. That sounds like just every Steam review. Yeah. Like, like what, what is, why is this one special? But this actually got a response from Bethesda. Uh, greetings. Thank you for taking the time to leave a review for Starfield. We are sorry that you do not like landing on different planets and finding many of them empty. Um, Some of Starfield's planets are meant to be empty by design, but that's not boring. When the astronauts went to the moon, there was nothing there. They certainly weren't bored. The intention of Starfield's exploration is to invoke um, the feeling of smallness in players and make you feel overwhelmed. You can continue to explore and find worlds uh, that do have resources you need or hidden outposts uh, to look through. To provide feedback to development for Starfield, please feel free to submit your feedback using this form here. Never stop exploring, but that's the customer support. That's wild. Yeah. That's wild. They need to not say anything to Steam yeah, reviews. That's, that's crazy like, to respond to something like that. That's, oh man, like, like I understand, like sometimes like, you're reading YouTube comments and one just pisses you off, so you want to respond to yeah, that. Yeah, but like, but first like, of all, but that's the Kraken, like this person, like you're taking ownership over the fact that the the the, the space exploration is boring. Yeah, that's that's insane. So like, it's I don't think it's a big deal that you land on a planet and there's nothing there. Mm-hmm. Like that happens in No Man's Sky. Yeah, you know, you, you, it happens in the real world. You yeah. gotta land on a planet, there's nothing gonna be there. Like the guy said, you land on the moon and there was nothing on the moon. Yeah. Um. It's the fact that the space exploration is just boring in general. Like yeah. even if there w- was stuff on the other planets, it's still it's the way that you do the space exploration that's boring. It's all through menus. Yeah, you just you select, and the menus are horrible too. So yeah. you, you there's sub menus upon sub menus, and then when you get through all of them, you finally click on a planet and go to it. Yeah, uh, and that's what makes it boring. That's yeah. what makes it bad. And uh, you know, I'm thinking of a game like. Cause what did it say? Uh, the attention of Starfield was to invoke the feeling of smallness in players and make you feel overwhelmed. You look at a game. I'm like, overwhelmed by menus. Yeah. I'm not overwhelmed by the planets. You look at a game like Shadow of the Colossus, where like most of that game is just you and your horse exploring an empty, barren world, mm-hmm. like just wandering. Your name is called Wanderer, and you literally just wander the world. But eventually, you run across a giant fucking monster. <laughs> Yeah, and you slay it. That's like a reward for your exploration. You're get you're getting a sense of accomplishment mm-hmm. for your exploration, and at the same time, you know your character is like this big, and the whole world around you is like a thousand times the size. So that's a that is really good at making you feel small and overwhelmed, and also like rewarding you for your exploration. So. That doesn't seem like that's what Starfield is doing at all. It's just giving you barren planets to explore. Yeah, if the problem is the fact that the planets are barren, I don't know what the solution is. Maybe just don't make the game. <laughs> Maybe yeah. just the whole concept of the game is stupid. Well, even like Mass Effect had a bunch of planets to explore. You couldn't explore like the whole surface of them, but there were things to do on the planets. You know, maybe you know, a more curated experience. That's the thing too. Like a lot of games think like just giving you like the entire universe is enough. Like look how much, look how big the the world is, but just because a game is big doesn't mean it's good. But Bethesda fell into that trap. Yeah. Uh, After Skyrim, like Skyrim, that's the biggest map of video games ever had. Yeah. And then every game after that needed to have the biggest map of games ever had. Yeah. Uh, so much so that Fallout 4 had nothing in it. There was yeah. just big, empty wastelands. Yeah. Um, and they were like, this is the biggest map of Fallout games ever had. And it's like, okay, well, put shit in it, though. Yeah. Like, don't just make everything really far away. It, it makes it boring. Yeah. Um, no Man's Sky had a lot of big, empty planets, but I, get, I wasn't into it. But you do land on these planets and gain minerals and stuff. And you get you collect stuff from the planet. Yeah. And every planet had different stuff to collect, uh-huh. you know? Um, so I guess Starfield needed, needs to give you a reason to explore these planets. Mm -hmm. I, when I was playing it, I just wanted to plow through the main story and I did have a good time, uh, finding like landing on a planet 
and figuring it out and like doing the main story stuff. Yeah. But if I went off on my own, it wouldn't. It was. It would. It would be bad. Right. Uh, because the game makes it pretty clear that it doesn't want you to to explore. Like, because you can't just land on a planet. You have to land exactly where they tell you yeah. to land. You know, it's it's not the sort of space exploration that. Even they're using as a defense. Like, you can't really explore much. Yeah. So, it's confusing. Because the game seems like... It seems like they're, like, gaslighting you into thinking that it's an exploration game when it's really not. It's just... Yeah. It's, it's just a... It's, it's like... It's literally like Mass Effect. Where mm -hmm. you where you just land on a planet and there's, like, a canned thing that you do. You know? Yeah. Anyway. Uh... Okay. We that's enough of that. Okay. Let's talk about uh Hideki Kamiya real quick. This fucking guy. <laughs> Back in September, the Platinum Games co founder announced that he would be leaving the studio after 16 years um, of development. Uh, a month later, he he launched a YouTube channel. Uh, he's not actually allowed to work on games in any capacity for the next year. His recent video saw him respond to fan questions, uh, where he spoke about the future of Bayonetta. Uh, he says. I worked on Bayonetta 1, 2, 3, and Origins. I've talked about this in various interviews that the Bayonetta series would consist of a total of nine episodes and that I wanted to grow the franchise beyond the Bayonetta saga, but it seems like I may have to take the full saga to the grave with me. Uh, he also spoke of how he doesn't own the Bayonetta IP and that he supposes those who do will probably keep going, keep it going. The most e recent entry in the series was the prequel Bayonetta Origins, uh, Kareza and the Lost Demon, uh, which explored the titular character's past in a storybook-like fashion where Bayonetta might head next is anyone's guess uh, now. So, yeah. He, we're supposed to get nine Bayonetta games, but we might still get more than that. But Kamiya's like, nah, I'm going to take my secrets to the grave. So he, he wouldn't be working on them, though. No, no, no. They're for somebody else to work on. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, he doesn't want to help him out. Like, why would he? That's his whole reason for working there was yeah. to, to be the ideas guy. And uh, why, yeah, why would he give them? But I guess, it's, the so I guess that sauce. means like the next game he does, which will probably be a Bayonetta style game, um, won't use any of the ideas for any future Bayonetta games. Mm -hmm. uh, Hiker Trash says you can land anywhere you want on planets, I'm pretty sure. You don't have to land on the name points of interest. I feel like you have to be pretty sure about that if you're going to yeah. say that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can't. So where are we at now? Uh, I'll just also add that Kamiya uh, also said in this video that he doesn't want to do uh, team-ups with other developers like Kojima as he thinks it would be a disaster. Quote, <laughs> It doesn't work in Dragon Ball where Goku fuses with other characters. Two people with completely different personalities and ideas would clash. There's no way you'd get a decent game out of that. There's a saying in Japanese, uh, maybe it's a proverb, too many captains will steer the ship up a mountain, so there, so there should only be one captain. Too many captains will steer the ship up a mountain. That's too many cooks yeah. will spoil the broth. That's, yeah. that's interesting. That's an interesting one. Got a point. I'm. We have an echo, so what I've been doing is I've been muting our mics <laughs> when, when we're not talking until the echo goes away. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. I mean, I, it sounds like Hideki Kamiya just doesn't want to. He he just seems like the type of person who would not be able to. He needs to run the ship. Yeah. Uh. He that would he would not do well in a collaborative environment. No. no. Although you know he. He directed Resident Evil 2, the original, back in the day. And, you know, because he worked with Shinji Mikami. He worked with, um, I forgot, the guy who, like, rewrote the game at the last minute. Uh, but I guess now that he's Hideki Kamiya, Hideki Kamiya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to work with anyone either. I want to talk about this. This is at the bottom, but I want to talk about it quick. Jeff mm -hmm. Keighley, uh, uh, he's talking about the controversy the, yes. the, about Dave the Diver. Yes. So, uh... In a stream from yesterday's Game Awards Q&A, Jeff Keighley answered one viewer's question about how many world premieres. He, he touched upon a lot of stuff, and the three big ones were world premieres, um, security, and the Dave the Diver controversy. So first okay. up, um, talking about world premieres, 
uh, how many world premieres would appear at the show. Keely disclosed that he is not sure of a firm number and said it would be around the same as last year, but then segue to discuss what constitutes a world premiere. He says, uh, actually, you'll see this year, we often put up those cards, world premiere. Uh, we're kind of moving away from that just because everything's kind of, is it a first look? Is it an announcement, etc." cetera? Uh, so we just try... We just treat it all as great game content. Uh, I I respect that because yeah. uh, a lot of times it'll say world premiere and then it's just it's something, something we, we've it's like barely any new information about yeah. the game. Yeah. yeah. So that that makes sense. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I mean, I understand like it will be like world premiere. Here's your DLC outfit for Naraka Blade Point. You know, yeah, like it's something like, like that. some bullshit that doesn't matter. Like I understand wanting to like say like this is the first time like you're seeing this. Like that's big news for them. But like at the same time, it it probably is just better to drop it altogether. Yeah. Okay. Next up, when asked if they they would add extra security measures to avoid stage crashers, Keeley confirmed that they were, but avoided going into specifics as to not give potential stage crashers any revealing information. Good. Good. Uh, we don't want to talk about that stuff too publicly just because it's security. Uh, Keeley tightening up security is he not did a surprising. Stream. I remember he, he he streamed like two days ago. Yeah, like it, it was uh, the Game Awards was streaming, so that was that yeah. was surprising. Uh, last year, somebody crashed the stage towards the end, approaching the mic, and um, made the infamous Orthodox Rabbi Bill Clinton comment. Uh, and then later that year at Gamescom, which he was hosting, uh, two attendees crashed the stage during his opening remarks for the show. He's the, gonna punch somebody. Yeah, and you know what? He should. He should. <laughs> He should just yeah. lay one on one. Yeah, you know, let him go. You let him lose. Tell that like during the Gamescom one, he he like wanted to kill that man with his bare hands. He was he was. So Jeff Keeley is is you know like he's he's the golden yeah. boy. He's like you know uh, he's made for TV. Mm -hmm. He was he was bred from the womb to be a TV guy. Yes, and he was clearly angry yeah <laughs> that was a that was a uh, uh an emotion we have never seen from jeff yeah. keely before so it was scary yeah uh elsewhere in the q a keely also addressed the recent controversy regarding dave the divers nomination for best indie game explaining that the game awards defers to their jury to determine what constitutes an independent game or not adding that independent can mean different things to different people and it's sort of a broad term. So yeah, Dave the Diver, that game is made by a group named Mint Rocket. It's a smaller game from a smaller group, but it's part of Nexon. They're employees of Nexon, which is a very large publisher. So I think it's a fair debate and discussion. Is that game truly independent or is it not? Uh, you can argue it either way, it's independent in spirit and that it's a small game with a, I don't know what the budget is, a relatively small budget, but it's from a larger entity, whereas there are other games on that list from much smaller studios. Yeah, that just makes sense to me. Like, like it's it's hard to quantify what indie means these days. Yeah. Uh, so what's he going to do? D remove it from the, the category? <laughs> well, no, it's too late now. Yeah. I mean, he can't. I mean, he can't. Doesn't do anything. He doesn't like vote on the categories and right. stuff. He has no say in that. I'd like to bring up a tweet from a uh, friend of the show, Liam, mm -hmm. guy who made Curse to Golf, who is an indie developer. Yes, he said. I mean, Jeff's quote speaks truth, but applied to the context of Dave the Diver, perhaps not. Indie is undefinable at this point, but there are some games that are easy to define as not indie. So I guess he thinks that. That's not an indie game. Yeah. Well, he's the one who uh, told me about what what they're calling now triple eyes. Yes. Which is uh, independent, but big budget independent. Yeah. Which is silly. It's a silly way to put it. But I think, I mean, back in the day in like the Xbox 360 era, you had clear indie games. Like yeah. this is an indie game. A uh, uh, big studio didn't, didn't work on this. There wasn't a lot of money. It was a small team of people. This is an indie game. Yeah. And now I think indie games are just so much more viable than they've ever been. Everybody has tools to make games now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's a lot more murky what an indie game is. Yeah. I mean, I think obviously, you know, if you see like EA 
or Activision or Microsoft or Sony mm-hmm. or Nintendo or Ubisoft. Like, you're, those are not indie games. Right. But, like, how many people even have even heard of Nexon? Yeah, you know? I haven't. Yeah. I haven't heard of it until right so. now. What if you are developing the game all by yourself, right? Yeah. Uh, or you have a small team of, pe- of like, let's say three people, but right. you pay them a lot of money because your dad is on the board for an oil company <laughs> and you have millions and millions of dollars to spend right. on your little project. Mm-hmm. Is that an indie game? If you're paying everybody hundreds of thousands of dollars to work on your little pet project. I mean, technically it's an indie game. Technically it's an indie game. Yeah. What's the difference between that and uh, being funded by a big company? Well, again... When you're funded by your dad. <laughs> so, like, to me, independent uh, means outside the traditional studio structure. Right. That was one know? of the definitions yeah. we defined last week, I think. So, it's outside the traditional studio structure. It, it counts as independent. That's a good point. So, what if... So, what if uh, an oil company developed a game that's outside the traditional <laughs> i'm just i'm just having a goof yeah having a fun time uh all right simpsons hit and run dev uh on why there's no sequel all right i'll just i'll skip ahead though the simpsons hit and run received a remake at the hands of extremely dedicated fans uh radical entertainment never finished development on a sequel what made hit and run popular with players was the fact that it was written by the writers of the Simpsons had the voice actors from the show and it oozed the same kind of charm that the Simpsons was so influential in pop culture of its day and the open world sandbox style that it borrowed from Grand Theft Auto made it approachable to players at the time of its release. Executive producer um, John Melquire, uh, producer Steve Boxka, Boxka and writer Chris Mitchell and programmers uh, Carrie Breeze Bois and Greg Mayer and designer Darren Evanson. A bunch shed- of guys from the yes. game. So guys from the game, all weird names. They shed some light on what happened during the development of the sequel as to and as well as why it never became a franchise despite its initial success. And a three-minute clip of the interview with Ben Hansen uh, was posted on the MinMax YouTube channel where the developers revealed that even though they had a license to develop up to five games using Simpsons IP, The sequel's production was halted in its early stage of development. Um, To clarify the statement, it was said uh, it was a five game deal for less money than I think Vivendi paid for the first game, um, explaining how the at the time boss was also perplexed. Um, He was just like, I don't understand. I give it to you on a silver platter. Why aren't you just saying yes and doing these games? It was just a really bizarre decision. I'll never understand it. Most people on the production level never understood it. One of the features that was developed for the sequel prior to its cancellation included a mechanic for players to lug objects around with their vehicle. The towing mechanic was only developed as a prototype by Greg Mayer, in addition to a few assets as well as a PowerPoint presentation represented the sole work completed for Hit and Run sequel before the powers that be pulled the plug. While the video game rights for The Simpsons were eventually purchased by Electronic Arts, the developers are united with fans and wanted to see an official remake of hit and run that's very weird because simpsons hit and run did extremely well didn't yes it? it was a it was a very popular game it reviewed very well it sold very well i think what happened what he's not saying but what happened was the rights holders were 20th century fox and while they were trying to develop a hit and run sequel fox just said no no we're good oh fox said no yeah and i thought vivendi said no no, Fox said no because Fox are the, were the rights holders. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but they had a license. Oh, they had a license for the for up to five games. Yeah. But Fox, I guess, had the rights to be like, no, yeah, they had the final say. Even though they just had a big hit on their hands. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, that's crazy. And Vivendi should have probably pushed for it. Yeah. But, yeah, and then selling like what. That sounds like a worthless IP if the license holder doesn't want anything to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the, it's the Simpsons, too. Like, it's it was probably their most valuable IP at the time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe it required some work from the, like, voice actors and stuff? I don't know. No, because they signed voice actors to, like, you know, specific contracts where they do... Because then in the, the EA game, the entire cast was back doing that. Mm-hmm. 
So I think it's like in their contract where they like are involved with licensed work, like uh, toys and merchandise and video games. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, next, uh, next is Call of Duty's Black Ops. Hooray! Uh, I'll just read the bullet points. Next year's Call of Duty is indeed another entry in the Black Ops series. Focused on the CIA, the next Black Ops is set during the Gulf War and will examine the U.S.'s role in the conflict. Previously, it's point to a return of round-based zombie mode and remastered maps from all pre- from previous Call of Duty Black Ops games. I mean, I like the original Black Ops. Uh, they're calling this Black Ops 6. That's probably just the code name for it. Was there a Black Ops 5? Cold War. That counts? Yeah. That counts as Black Ops? Yeah, it's called Call of Duty Black Ops Cold oh. War. Oh. And it's got the characters from... The old Black Ops games. You are right. I know that because that was the last game I played before Spider-Man came out. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so this won't be a reboot? No. Okay. It takes place during the Gulf War, uh, which is the first major conflict between Saddam Hussein's Iraq and a coalition of U.S.-led militaries. Uh, U.S. President George Bush Sr. and U.K. Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher deployed troops alongside Egypt and Saudi Arabia into Iraq after the Hussein regime invaded Kuwait in what formed the largest coalition of militaries since World War II. Are they going to blow up a Game Boy? I hope so. So, we think that now that Microsoft has a say, they might make... Activision take a year off. Yeah. Uh this seems to go against that. But this I I'm pretty sure this is just a rumor. Uh there's nothing they 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 can't be announcing this right now. No, they're not announcing it right now. It's just according to multiple sources familiar with Activision's mm-hmm. plans, Call of Duty 2024 will support the Black Ops moniker. Okay, so this and, is just yeah. the next Call of Duty yes. will be a Black Ops. Yes. Uh, they're saying that it's 2024. The plans probably say for 2024, but with no official announcement, don't get your hopes up for a 2024 Call of Duty. See, I disagree. Mm-hmm. I think they're probably long enough in development where a 2024 Call of Duty is still on the table, mm-hmm. where at this point it'd probably be more trouble to just cancel it and then like or delay it. Mm-hmm. So just let them uh, fart out this game, and then the 2025 Call of Duty game will be the 2025 will be the year without Call of Duty. Yeah. Well, I don't know because their production schedule is all messed up. This year was supposed to be the off year. And just have a big expansion pack for yeah. Modern Warfare 2. But notable idiot Bobby Kodak <laughs> got got in the board meeting and said, no, we're going to make the expansion pack Modern Warfare 3 sell it for full price. You have a year and a half to make it instead of the three years uh, cycle. Get on it or we're going to lay you off. And then guess what? We're going to lay you off anyway. Yeah, I think that even... Modern Warfare 3 that just yeah. came out. Yes. I think that if they decided to delay it the day before it went gold, mm-hmm. it would be a much better game. Yeah. If they decided to give it a year, yeah. even e- it, it was done. It was ready to go. Still needed more time to cook and it would have yeah. been better. Oh, yeah. It would have been better off for, for a year. Yeah. So I know that all the gears are in motion right now, but I think that there's plenty of time for them to decide like, hey, work on this for a little while. Yeah. Although we don't know how long Treyarch's been working on this. It said long in development. Yeah. So well, it's possible they've been working on this for a really long time anyway. Was it's three years to make a Call of Duty game? Usually this yeah. last one was less than that. A year and a half. Yeah. yeah. So and or a year and a few months. And it does show. Yeah. yeah. For some reason I keep playing it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh last news. Uh first look at Fallout Show. Who cares? <laughs> Here's the thing, man. Like it's I do like Fallout style and everything. Yeah. I think it's a really interesting world and, and unique characters and stuff. I'm hating how these video game adaptations don't try to stylize things at all. Like this is just looking like uh it's just looking like every other video game adaptation, every other right. like uh, like like it's doing a faithful recreation of the characters of Fallout and, mm-hmm. and the and the uh uh tech of fallout but like not really like look at this guy like why doesn't he look like he's from the 50s 
Well, isn't that the whole Fallout aesthetic? It's from the 50s. It's like a retro future thing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. He just looks like sci-fi to me. Right. And this whole thing, just a lot of it. Like, look at this. Like, what is that? Like, like. <laughs> I think they could have done a lot to... A, a lot of what I like about Fallout is that it's this weird juxtaposition between sci-fi and... 1950s style and you got right. like the weird 50s music and shit and 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 weird 50s architecture and stuff mm -hmm. and uh you need that vibe right you need that you need that vibe ca captured on video and this is just like pictures it could yeah. just be like set photos so yeah. who knows but i want that from the uh video from from the from the show i want the show to give me that vibe yeah so, I mean, again, these are just pictures. It's not a trailer. So we haven't seen, the, you know, this motion picture in motion yet. Right. Um, we do know it's coming to Amazon. It's um, it's coming from Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy, the co-creators of Westworld. People really liked Westworld, at least the first season of it. That's um, great because Westworld was just Fallout. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, reading the... The plot summary, Fallout is led by Ella Purnell as Lucy, a girl who grew up in one of the famed vaults, but is now making her way into the outside world for the first time. That's the plot of every Fallout game. So at least they got the basics right. Yeah, I just hope that they stick to like some 1950s stylization because that's yeah. the best part of, of Fallout. Well, uh, Hannah's getting Wendy's. What should I get? Uh, I, haven't, I've, I had Wendy's the other day. It's been years since yeah. I've gotten Wendy's. They have a like a crispy chicken sandwich. It's very good. I like a good chicken sandwich yeah. from these places. I'm, I'm yeah. not. I'm not like their meat's not great. I mean, uh, Wendy's is good compared to all of the other yeah. ones. But I've been. I, 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 they've been doing their, better chicken than they've been. Whatever their crispy chicken sandwich is. Okay, I forgot what it's called. I, I will say this: this is, this is a plus of having kids. You get them the kids meal because it comes with a little toy. And they don't. They're not doing it anymore. But they had um, Justice League toys. And they were done in the style of like the ultimate muscle toys from like the eighties oh. where they were like solid colors and like pre-posed, but they were like really well stylized and stuff. So I have, I now just have like a little mini green flash just like on display in my kitchen. So you're saying the benefit of having kids is the toys that you get. Yes. Okay. When they get the happy meals. When they get the happy meal. Okay. Crispy. I could just buy a happy meal myself, but. Uh, let I don't like mayo. I'm taking the mayo yeah, off, whatever. Mayo off. Classic, uh, chicken, classic sandwich. chicken sandwich. Yeah. I need cheese. You're, you're not a cheese guy. I need cheese in my life. I mean, you can put cheese on it. Is the ghost pepper ranch chicken sandwich going to actually blow my dick off? Or is it going to just be a moderate amount of spice? There's only one way to find out. What is that? What is what a little crispies? It's got like a little crispies. Last on time it. I got Wendy's, I got the chili with it on the side. It's $3. Remember how much it was when we were kids? A dollar? Yep. It was a dollar. Yeah. Or free if the Islanders got a score. <laughs> <laughs> if they scored at all during yeah. their game, you would get free free chili. Uh, apparently now they sell the Wendy's chili in a can at Walmart. It's $6. Oh, my God. You know what I saw at Walmart? What did you see at Walmart? Friendlies has these little cups yeah. of, like, strawberry, like, uh, like, like, it's like those strawberry pops you uh, like the ice cream pops yeah. that you would get the strawberry shortcake stuff yeah. that but in like a little thing for two dollars it's like a little cup yeah and you can get like a chocolate one and i was just like, fucking good yeah they're good <laughs> get that spice it won't hurt you okay i'm getting this i'm getting the ghost pepper ranch chicken sandwich without the ranch <laughs> <laughs> uh. all right i don't have a tweet of the week but you i do <laughs> This is from uh, who? From Smark993. So glad they finally got Godzilla on a podcast. <laughs> it's, it's the thumbnail for a Godzilla. What trailer? Uh, TV show, Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Oh. Um, it's airing on Apple TV. It just looks like he's talking into like, a mic for some yeah. reason. <laughs> I just think that that just. Godzilla. That's, 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 that's pretty, that's pretty good. 
All right. Uh, uh, now we're gonna. T- oh, we got unboxing. Yeah, you got unboxing. I'll do that while we. You know what? This is very. It's very simple. Okay. We got purple eight bit Duke controller. Ooh, give me. It's yours. I gave, I had a green one. Gave it to fried biscuits already. Okay. But I also have another green one. They gave okay. me two green. I ones. think I have this already. You have it, but I not have, purple. Yeah, purple. Oh, we unbox. You know what? Because we got a green one too. Okay. I think eight bit do sent us them, and then this company that I keep forgetting the name of. <laughs> uh, they're like uh. Oh, we also had a red version. Here's a blue version of the Ultimate Controller. Ooh. These colors, I oh, think, are exclusive. Do you, ha- do you still have the red one? I gave the red one away. All right, then I want the blue one. I right, take the blue one. Damn you it. You don't have this? No, I gave mine to a friend. Oh, I gave well, my black one to a friend. Here's a blue one. Thank you. I think these colors are exclusive to this Amazon seller. Uh, it starts with an A. Uh, oh, man, I really would have wanted to throw red one. Red but... Oh, nice. I'm sorry. This is still nice. This is still nice. Acnes. And it's not exclusive to them. I don't know why they give I've me seen this stuff. The, I've, I've seen this on Ape Badu's website. Yeah, you can buy on Amazon. Yeah. They, they Ape Badu also. Oh, no. What? The Nintendo Switch version is exclusive. No, no. Here. Nope. Give me the next. I'm wrong. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why Acnes sends me these, but uh, I should have left it in the sheath. <laughs> Let me tell my girlfriend I want the ghost pepper ranch chicken sandwich with no ranch i'm gonna ask a controversial question since we're talking about wendy's frosties your opinion Fro- Fro- frosties yeah the wendy's frosty that's what they're called yeah uh what a, they're good are they it's like it's ice it's soft serve ice cream no it's not soft serve ice cream it's melted ice cream it's I slightly fucking it's hate slightly melted ice cream. watery it's uh soft serve it's ice not, cream you gotta like stick it in the freezer for a day and actually like harden it up because otherwise it's or, just or it's just melted it, ice cream or eat it immediately it's somewhere in a weird area between a milkshake and uh, and soft serve no, ice cream it's just melted ice cream <laughs> it's, you're getting shitty frosties then it's it, every fucking wendy's it's we go just, to it's just uh, it's just soft serve. That's like a little more liquid than normal. It's soft served. That's melted already. <laughs> so by the time you eat it, it's just water. And I hate melted ice cream. Uh, it comes with thumb, uh, thumbstick covers. <laughs> oh, that's the Acnes. Uh, <laughs> that's the Acnes guarantee. Yeah. Oh, wait. I think they sent me a letter. It's all dusty. This is Jim from the promotion team at the Amazon seller, Acnes. Uh, also, what is this, Marker Felt? What is this? Uh, I don't know. Uh, exclusive agent of Ape Do Gully Kit and Retro Flag. Uh, we sent you Ape Do Ultimate Controller, new color from Acnes, which produced by Ape Do and authorized to be sold exclusively on Acnes stores, except that Ape Do's also selling it on Amazon. I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. Um, it will not be sold by Ape Do official stores <laughs> on Amazon and AliExpress. Literally, I'm looking at the eight bit do. I'm I'm on Amazon. Eight bit, it's right here, <laughs> and they have it in blue. I don't know. Maybe the purple. No, because we got it from eight bit do. The green, the green and the purple. Here it is from Acnes. Uh, eight bit do SM30 Pro. Maybe that's the one that are exclusive. No, uh, there's the green from 8 bit do. The, the green is in the shop that 8 bit do exclusive. The purple is a shop that 8 bit do exclusive. But they're on Acnes. Here we go. Uh red and blue by now 8bitdo.com exclusive. <laughs> we also hope you can show your fans again the new colors of the 8 bit do SN30 Pro. Okay, I'm confused, but thank yes. you. Yes. I also, what else did I get? Uh, here's some fucking battery packs for this goddamn Steam Deck and shit. I don't know. There's one. two of them. I don't know. It's heavy. The big old battery pack. This. What? They're both 45 watts. One's 16,000 milliamp, and one's 20,000. Maybe it's it's probably just costs a different amount. Yeah. Uh, now this is from Fun Lab. I've heard of Fun Lab before. Okay. <laughs> This is Iris from Fun Lab, a brand which focuses on making all kinds of funny accessories for Nintendo <laughs> Switch. Ha ha, see, we had a good little goof yeah. about it. 
I'm a big fan of your YouTube channel. You haven't seen a lick of my YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, I really love your your I really love your them and the part showing some details of the products is great. Okay, thank okay. you. Well, uh, these look fun. Yeah, so these are controllers that remind me a lot of the uh, Binbok controllers. Yeah. They're, they're like Joy-Cons. Yeah. Uh, oh, though this is uh, basically their version of a Pro Controller. Yeah. And then uh, that this. is like the Binbok looking Joy-Con thing. Okay. And then this is some sort of carrying case. Okay. As if I don't have enough Nintendo Switch carrying cases. Oh, this is uh, reminiscent of a certain game that I don't want to say. Yeah. A lot of this stuff is reminiscent of said game. <laughs> said game of the year or game yeah. this year? Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate, yeah. All right. I'm just messing up this box. All right, so these are the Joy-Con thingies. This is an extremely generic uh, Nintendo Switch case. Okay. Okay. QC and yeah, passed. I like these. I, I, li I like these types of... Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I can't tell They're the quality. They're definitely like... They feel more comfortable than Joy-Cons. So... Yeah. Yeah, they, these are exactly like the Binbok controllers. The USB-C uh, charge. Here's the the slider thing. Well, they should charge in the device. Right. But it, they both the have USB-C ports on the bottom. I think that's for firmware. Okay. But you could also charge it like that, I think. Uh, yeah, they feel exactly like the Binbok controller. And I like those. So if these are similar price, they're, they're, they're nice. They're I like the white. They're good. Yeah. They're cool. They, they're they're going to have the same uh, RGB that the Binbok controllers yeah. have. And just see one of these controller things very cool oh this is uh this looks like it's from that uh that ink game where you shoot ink at people and you're a squid and a kid at the uh, same time, which is legally distinct from the nintendo one xbox 360 is wet yes mm. remember, remember that that game had a good soundtrack uh i will read last week's wolf then okay i'm gonna Wolfden. try to open this it's you stuck. do that i'm gonna this is big this is, this is a big ass controller a, when you put the middle guy in it. Okay, USB C. Okay, well, who who are you? Um, all right, reading comments from last week's Wolf Den podcast. We got Chris one one six. It lights up. Ooh, I like the purple. That's that's, that's cool. cool. Ooh, feels it. All if right. these are more than forty dollars, don't don't bother. I feel bad saying this because like it, it feels like one of like the first generation like PDP, like uh, controllers for Switch, like the shape of it and the ergonomics of it. But, I mean, oh, where'd it go? Press home for light. I mean, the light just looks so nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, and it shines through the graphic. That's yeah. cool. That's really cool. It's got turbo. It's got interchangeable D pad. These are Pokemon, by the way. Are they? Oh, I thought it was Splatoon. It it's weird. It's like Splatoon, but then that's the. Oh, here's they're the, like vaguely Pokemon. Here's the other D pad. Spragato. That's Spragato. Okay. And the and the and the the other guy. Yeah. Wow. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Does the other one? Hopefully, it's now. not that's more than question. forty dollars. <laughs> uh, Chris, uh, one one six. I also have the Modern Warfare three email thanking me for reaching a milestone, and I haven't even touched Modern Warfare three, neither beta. So you are welcome, Activision. <laughs> Here's the, uh, oh, uh, the uh, freaking Zelda one. If you want to open it, uh, G I mean nondescript game of the year Nintendo game. Yes, uh, Jaina. Zero nine praise to Will for mentioning the library. Many people don't know that you can check out video games and movies too. So the game in question that I wanted to check out that I asked my friend about was Alan Wake Two, and uh, I also was going to put that on my Amazon wish list because my wife always complains that she doesn't know what to get me, even though I have an Amazon wish list full of video games. And then I remembered Alan Wake Two is a digital only game. Oh yeah, so not going to be at the library. That's a good point. Uh, but they do have Street Fighter 6, so I might just wind up take that Street out. Fighter 6! Or just stay logged into my Steam Deck yeah. when you take it. <laughs> uh, Caleb yeah, Fox... Yeah, lights up too. That's cool. Yeah. I, like, I, I like the idea of the light up. Caleb Fox says, I was recently listening to a Wolf Den, po Wolf Den Live... Wolf Den Live? Black Friday episode? And y'all were talking about using the Target gift cards to buy more games. Whereas now, y'all are talking about getting things like toothpaste and Windex. 
<laughs> oh, how the times have changed. Yeah. We have, we have, uh, yeah, we've evolved. We have too many games is the problem. Yes. We don't need more games. We need t uh, paper towels. I'm out of paper towels. <laughs> <laughs> I bought uh, duster re uh, refills today for my duster. Because I was at Woods and I, Ham and Cheddar wanted fucking, he was the only one that didn't want oat milk with his fucking coffee. Of I had to put goddamn uh, 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 lact lactose free milk because that was the only one the milk would have. Uh -huh. uh, and it ruined the steam wand. It just it <laughs> filled, it just caked all up on the steam wand and it got yeah. stuck there. He had this stuff, Rinsa, which is like specifically for cleaning the steam wand in an espresso machine. Uh huh. And it was amazing. It got it all right off. So I had to buy, I, had to, I bought some of that. Cleaning. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Fenn. The only remastered version of The Last of Us either game that made sense to me was The Last of Us Remastered on PS4. It was the first game, had a noticeable bump in visual from the PS3, and had the DLC included. When that happened, a lot of people still didn't even like the fact that that yeah. was happening. It was also the only way of playing it on the PS4. Whereas all these other versions make no sense with the PS5 being backwards. Compatible. I think that's the big thing because yeah. between PS3 and PS4, there was no way to play your PS3 games, which is the same reason why you saw a lot of PS2 games remade on PS3 and a lot of uh, 360 games being re remade on, sorry, a lot of original Xbox games being remade on 360 because those games weren't able to be backwards compatible for those systems. So it was harder them. to do yeah. that. Yeah, it was harder to make them backwards compatible. And yeah. if they're going to do the work on them, why not just up-res them and, yeah. and make them better? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that made a little bit of sense. Yeah. At the time, it didn't really make sense to me. I was like, why? I got yeah. it already. Uh, but now looking back at it, looking at how hard it's been to port PlayStation 3 games, mm -hmm. I understand a little bit more. Gray Gray Bonbon bon says, big fan commenting here to boost your metrics. Fred, you. why did you put this comment <laughs> here for that reason? <laughs> We appreciate anybody trying to boost our metrics. Yes. Uh, Andy Granny, thanks for the prime. Now I'm in the chat. Okay. We used Rinsa at the cafe I used to work for. It's, uh, I mean, I bought it. It, it, it worked so good. You usually, you, you could just use hot water and like soap to clean your steam wand, but man, it was so much easier to do it this way. Also, I got my espresso machine back. I know. It's all, I'm very, it's, very happy for you. It's amazing. It's so much better. Than that other fucking guy. The other one's fine. It's fine. It's a fine espresso machine. Yeah. But I got spoiled by having an expensive one. Well, I went to the library. All they have is bootleg Wii games. I mean, look, the library is not going to have like, like a complete Best Buy section of video games for you there. I know the library I go to, they got PlayStation 2 games. And like not good ones. But they do, they do have up to current gen video games there. And do they, they do have some decent ones. Do they have consoles? I don't know if they have consoles, but I see that you, that'd be cool. you can take out, I don't know if you can take it home or if you have to use it there, but they do have a Genesis mini that you can play with. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, I literally just saw one I wanted to read. Uh, Bob, what is your hot take on Xbox Series S accidentally bundled with a physical game at a Dutch retailer? What? Accidentally bundled with a physical game? It looks like a Dutch retailer. <laughs> they physically like tie uh, FIFA 23 to, to the box of a Series S. Oh, it has no disk drive. Yeah. Oh, I didn't put that together. <laughs> oh, that is dumb. That's funny. Wow. Nobody thought to be like, what a horrible idea this is. But I think maybe this speaks to a larger problem of like, you know, obviously disk-based games are still a thing. They're still a viable option to people who want to play games. People still think of video games like you put the thing in the thing. So how do you solve this problem? Sony solved this problem by charging you $80. Yeah, but this is also like, if you're going to make games digital, you can't have a retailer make deals like this to yeah. offload their stock. You're, 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 uh, 
This is the whole problem that Sony's being sued for all over again. Right. Uh, I'm currently trying to beat what I think is the neon white final level. And oh my God, it's difficult, says George McFarlane. I got to yeah. play it. I'm, I'm like at the end of the game. I, I haven't gone back into it. Frosties are solid, not amazing, but nothing to write home about. No, McFlurries oh. are solid when the ice cream machine works. McFlurries are pretty thick. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got to go. Yeah. Well, it's late. It's late. Thanks for hanging out. Everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on various podcast services such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and audible apparently but no matter where you get the show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms uh i might stream tomorrow uh because i'm supposed to finish a video tonight uh and then i'll have time and that's that's my story uh what else is going on I, there's too many things too many things happening i gotta fix this fucking echo now <laughs> might have to go to wendy's Thanks for being here, guys. See you later. Uh, go. Uh, I'm gonna raid Wood because he's streaming for some reason. Uh, good. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.